Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Katie and I'm the Organic Esthetician. Hi everyone, good morning. Well, it's morning here. It's a little early and I'm feeling a little puffy. Um, welcome back. I did it two weeks in a row, like I said I would. So this is the beginning of me being back every Monday. This week's video is going to be a little different. I recently had the opportunity to be on my very first podcast ever, which was so fun. Um, it was really an enjoyable experience. Leslie from Love Sarah and Gay interviewed me over Zoom a couple weeks ago, and we were able to record our interview, and they were generous enough to lend me some of that footage. So um, I'm going to share it with you guys here on the channel. I thought it would be a fun way for you guys to learn a little bit more about me. If you're interested in knowing how I became an esthetician, what I think the most important part of your entire skincare routine is, or want to learn what I really think about organic ingredients, make sure you keep watching. Today on the show, we're going to be talking to Katie Sobelman, aka the organic esthetician. Katie is a California based licensed esthetician and skincare educator who has a focus on organic anti aging treatments. She sees clients in her LA based studio and also produces YouTube videos and blog posts to help consumers demystify the world of skincare. So let's say hello to Katie. Okay, so Katie, hi, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, just before we begin, some um, questions for you and, and about um, some of the treatments that you do with your clients. Um, I'd love to know, just to start, how you got into aesthetics. Um, you know, what drew you to being an esthetician? So at the time, before I went to school, I was doing some freelance makeup artistry, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really the direction that I wanted to go. And I thought that if I was going to become a serious makeup artist, I wanted to have a license behind me. So I decided to go to aesthetic school. I enrolled um, at an Aveda Institute in San Francisco. And um, while I was in school, I realized, oh, skincare is pretty cool. And maybe I want to do this instead. So while I definitely... Um, freelance as a makeup artist for years after I really kind of pivoted and transitioned my focus towards aesthetics. That's so funny. Um, I relate to that so much because it's exactly the sort of the same path that I had. I started, Oh at, really? Yeah. I started working at Mac and I knew nothing about skincare, but of course love the color and you know, yeah, that was like the dream job, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but all of the artists that I worked with were like, no, you got to learn about skincare if you're going to work in makeup. And um, it's so true. It absolutely is, is to me so much more interesting. And so how long total sort of have you been a licensed esthetician now? So um, I have been licensed for just over a decade. I think it was 10 years in January. Um, yeah. And it's been a weird, sometimes rocky road of, of meandering path, right? Yes. Figuring out what you want to do and getting yeah. there. Can you explain a little bit of, you know, the basic of why you came to call yourself the organic esthetician? Does it mean that you only use organic products in your services, your treatments, or how does that work? Or what does it mean to you? Yeah. So, um, I, what I found the longer I was in the industry is that there are some really harmful and pretty nasty ingredients that are in skincare. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I was first learning about, you know, cosmetic formulations and how skincare really affects the skin on a deeper level. Organic, organic ingredients were really important to me. Okay. Um, and they definitely still are. And that's kind of, you know, how I built my personal brand was all about using cleaner products. And I think organic is just an easier way to express that, yeah. but it's a much bigger and slightly more complicated, um, you know, arena when sure. you get into it. So yeah. um, I use a lot of organic products, but the problem with something that is, you know, an organic skincare product is that what well, only has to be what, like 98% organic or de depending on where you are, there's yeah. still this little opportunity to sneak something dirty in there. So even though the majority of the ingredients are organically grown and really beautifully cultivated, 
it still might have, you know, four glycols or uh, something else parabens or phthalates. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what I've kind of come to realize is maybe more important even than something being organic is that something, these skincare products have to be clean. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that's looking at like the European Union standards right. instead of um, United States or even Canada. Canada is a lot better than the U.S. And the U.S. went from what, 12 products to 30 products that are, or ingredients that are now banned. Yeah. So it's a little bit, but the EU has 1400. So um, I keep it clean and I use organic ingredients when I have the opportunity to do so. And do you think that there are specific products that benefit more from being organic or being really pure as possible than others? Like, do you think, for example, um, an organic face oil or, or investing in like an organic face oil maybe is a higher priority than uh, an organic cleanser? Or how do you feel about products labeled organic? So if it's specifically organic, if you have a product that's completely plant-based, mm -hmm. there's no reason why you can't have that in entire ingredient list to be organically cultivated or bio-Swiss or some of these bigger certifications that are available out there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that that question of like, is it okay if I get a drugstore cleanser and spend more money over here, you know, that's like a whole, whole bigger conversation we can have because I am yeah. very passionate about cleansing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that, uh, I don't think that it has to be mutually exclusive. Like I think that you can have an entirely clean product line. Yeah. Um, but I do think that when you're doing an oil serum that's all plant based, why use non-organic ingredients in that formulation? It doesn't make sense to me. Right. Yeah. Um, and then that translates usually into a higher quality ingredient, which is going to give you higher quality results in the end. And kind of shuffling on that point about results, um, when you're uh, seeing clients in studio, um, you know, when you're doing a treatment, when you're doing your 120 minute signature facial, um, what are some of the main concerns that clients today are coming to you to treat or to help them with over time? What, what would you say are like the main things clients are asking you about specifically when they're coming for a service? I focus pretty heavily on anti-aging. So I think that when people start coming to me, they have a little bit of that in their mind already. Yeah. Um, I get a lot of um, you know, my skin is dehydrated or I'm red or rashy. Um, I don't have a lot of acneic clients. I have a few. Um, but I feel like because I'm focused on more clean, organic options, mm -hmm. usually the clientele that's coming to see me is also interested in that, which means that their lifestyle and diet usually reflects that. Right. And in turn, I see less of those more acneic issues in the skin, which can be really closely tied to gut health. Um, so I get a lot of, um, you know, I have this line here. I don't want to get Botox. Um, help me so that I don't have to get injectables. Or I did injectables and they're so expensive and I was really unhappy with it. And I would really love to go down a different route. Um, right. And then a lot of just overall skin health. Um, so like alternative kind of to the Medi Spa um, approach, you would say. Yeah. So in my treatment, I do a gua sha facial massage. Mm -hmm. I do microcurrent and um, uh, oxygen infusions. And it's kind of that combination of those three things so far. Yeah. I found that I've had really great results at improving the overall health of the skin because mm -hmm. I can... I can talk to the skin, to the muscle, to the lymph, yeah. um, and um, really kind of even affect it at a cellular level when we're doing the oxygen infusions. And so, you know, the transformation isn't just, 
oh, I look more lifted and that line's gone. It's like, oh, my skin is functioning better. Right. And yeah. that's really what my goal is as an esthetician. It's like, I want to make your skin have everything it needs to be its best version of itself. Yeah, because I think a lot of people do sometimes forget, especially if you live in a fairly constant climate, people do forget that the skin fluctuates so much throughout the year, even month to month. Um, so yeah. it's so important to do those check-ins. And you know, the in-between facials, of course, I always find is the more important part. How are you taking care of your skin in between those services at home? So I am assuming you recommend uh, a home care program when you um, yeah, or complete a service with each client. Yeah, definitely. That's such a good point. You know, if you're not coming in and seeing your esthetician regularly and you have these bigger gaps, I think that it's even more important then mm -hmm. that you have a really solid home care routine that's addressing all of the needs that your skin might have. Yeah. And, you know, routines in the last, um, you know, few years have gone you know, so uh, complicated and, and there's so many different options. It can be really overwhelming. So I know sometimes when people hear the term skincare routine, they're picturing this like, you know, 15 step program that they've got to do and, and set aside, you know, 45 minutes every night. Um, do you sort of um, lean to the side of like more simplified or do you create more in-depth tailored programs? How do you like to, does it, does it kind of vary client to client or like what's your sort of philosophy when it comes to um, home care? Yeah, so I am very much about customization, um, not just to address your specific skin needs and concerns, but also your lifestyle. Like if you mm -hmm. have four kids and you're not washing your face right now, getting you to do a double cleanse every night is maybe just a little unrealistic, yeah. even if it's the best thing for your skin. Sure. So I think that I have like the dream routine, but then I have like, okay, let's pare that down and be more realistic. Um, and like what actually fits in with your schedule, because even if you bought the 15 step skincare routine, if you're not doing it, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So for me, I think it's more important that you, your clients are getting things that they'll actually do and use. Right. Yeah. And then once they start seeing a result and realize like, Oh, I can cleanse tone and put on a moisturizer every day and wear sunscreen. Like that's easy. I can do that. Maybe I can have a serum. Okay. Let's talk about serums. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing a serum, but you know what? I'm still having this thing. Okay, great. It's Cause you're not exfoliating. Right. And so I like to kind of, you know, you feel out your client, you see, you know, who they are, what they need, what their skin needs. And you really kind of can customize to that. Mm -hmm. I think that as with everything, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, while I do have clients that have a three-step skincare routine, I have clients with like an eight-step skincare routine too. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably lean towards the crazy end, like big. <laughs> but, um, but I, I, you know, I understand that that's not for everyone. Yeah. It's so important. You know, if it's just sitting on the bathroom vanity, what good is it? And yeah, yeah. I always think like the best skincare routine for you is the one you're actually going to do just like sunscreen. Exactly. People say, what's the best sunscreen, the one you're going to wear, because yeah. if you don't as wear as long it as it's chemical free. <laughs> 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 um, so that, you know, that's, I totally relate to that, that, uh, it has to be so well tailored for your lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of a fun question that I like to ask, what do you think most people today are doing wrong when it comes to their skincare or what are the, what are the no nos that you see in, in treatment room? So, well, that clients are doing or not doing. Doing um, or, or kind of mistakes that they're making right now. Sure. I mean, I think the biggest one is that um, people aren't cleansing properly if they are cleansing at all. Yes. Um, and, you know, even in the treatment room, I've been training estheticians and, you know, you're getting a facial and I, I, I was, this is something I did back in the day. Like you rush through the cleanse so you can get to the fun stuff. So you have right. time for the massage, you know, um, or 
yeah. the mask or exfoliation or extractions. Mm-hmm. But if the skin isn't properly cleansed, it does not matter what else you're putting on your skin, whether it's in the treatment room or at home, it's not going to be as effective. And I think really setting your skin up for success in that first step is so incredibly important. And then say you are using a cleanser, but that cleanser has something like sodium sulfate in it. And then, you know, that's an ingredient that's going to strip your skin of all of its natural moisture, break down that barrier function, which is so integral to the health of the skin. Um, And so maybe you are cleansing, but your cleanser is kind of working against you to improve the health of your skin. So I think cleansing is a big one. Yeah. Um, I I did a training and I always like to give other estheticians credit. Um, I was in Hawaii and they, the esthetician was like, I always like to tell my clients that it should take them as long to remove their makeup as it did to put it on. And I really love that. That's great. It kind of puts it in perspective for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so true that, you know, what you said, how often people are willing to spend the money on the treatment steps, the the anti-aging serum or the powerful eye cream, you know, the, the new moisturizer, whatever it may be. Um, but they're skimping when it comes to the preparation and the cleansing step. Um, and, and at exactly. the end of the day, I think the biggest part, not only are you hurting your skin, but your, your pocket, because if, if the skin's not properly cleansed, you're spending all this money on expensive treatments and where are they going or what are they really doing for you? Exactly. Exactly. And then to expand on that, <laughs> I think the next thing is that people aren't then using a toner if they're not even cleansing their skin, right? Absolutely. And it's the sneakiest little easiest thing that people skip Mm -hmm. that I think gives the biggest transformation and not just in the results, but also just the longevity of your skincare because you're balancing pH, you're adding hydration, but you're also allowing anything you put on after your toner to penetrate more readily and you get a little slip. So you also can use less products. So those expensive serums and moisturizers are now lasting longer just because you took a little toner and pressed it into your skin. Um, I feel like we're um, skincare soulmates because I say exactly the same thing. And I find today, especially, um, you know, with the rise of social media and YouTube, there seem to be like two real camps of people. Like you don't need toner. It's a waste of money or the die hard. I live by toner. I'll never not use a toner product. And then there's still a lot of people that are kind of in the, Ooh, I've had toners in the past. They stung, they burned, they were full of alcohol. I don't like toner. Um, but for all those very reasons, it's such an important step and it's less expensive than the other products and stretches everything else out. Like you go through way less totally. syrup when you use a toner. Totally. Um, so you said that cause I couldn't agree more. A little cheerleading. Um, <laughs> I love that. I love hearing that too. <laughs> um, and you know, everyone is dehydrated, whether you're oily and acneic or have more mature dry skin. Yeah. Everyone has dehydration. And yeah. so, you know, for someone who's had negative experiences with like an, an acid tone, something yeah, more astringent. Yeah. 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 And I would just say like, don't even bother with that. Like look for something hydrating. It's yeah. not going to break you out. Nothing bad's going to happen. It's just going to balance your pH. Absolutely. And the camp of of esthetician saying, oh, you don't need a toner because your cleanser's pH balance. Well, the water you use, like I live in LA, there's arsenic in our water. Like <laughs> you're rinsing your face with this pretty icky stuff. And then whatever that cleanser did to pH balance has now just been totally disrupted. So right. You always have to use a toner to rebalance the pH. So yeah, very passionate about this. <laughs> I, I fully support you in that, on that mission for sure. Um, anything else that you see, um, as still like a, a no, no, or, or, a a misconception that you find amongst your clients or wrong steps? Yeah. Um, you know, I think the other big thing is the fear that a lot of people have around facial oils. Sure. Um, especially if they're oily or acneic. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I think that's something that I've been really trying to like spread the good word of facial oil because it's so beneficial and you know, not every oil is created equal. And for me, I think even just as 
an esthetician, it was like, once I understood what the components of these oils were, the essential fatty acids, yeah. and realized that like, oh, okay, if this has omega-3, it's great for anti antioxidants and UV protection, or like, oh, this has omega-6, it's going to help prevent acne. Like yeah. that really clicked for me. And it was like, oh, okay, th this makes sense to me. I think this could make sense to everyone. Yeah. And so um, I think that especially more problematic skin. Ooh, I hate using that word. Let's not use that word. Uh, <laughs> opportunity skin, right? It's yeah. an op opportunity to change. So, yeah. um, but the more oily acneic skin types get really fearful about applying anything with oil to their skin when truly it's what their skin is asking for mm -hmm. by overproducing oil to compensate dryness or this lack of linoleic acid in the skin. So you're getting this influx of breakouts. Um, so I think that's, that's another really big one. I mean, aside from, you know, people not wearing sunscreen. Or... <laughs> I was waiting to see if that was going to be your last one, but it's such a given now that I feel like. Yeah, it's like, let's not even, that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there now. <laughs> it's true, you know, the, the thing about being scared of facial oils, even though they have gained so much popularity um, over the last, you know, five to 10 years, I would say, the, yeah, the campaign of, of oil-free went on for so many years in North America, it, not really in Europe, you know, that was something they never really bought into. Yeah, uh, definitely. And same in the, the Asian market. Um, but, you know, I think consumers just had it drilled into them for so long that like your skincare has to be oil free, look for an oil free moisturizer. You know, I, I can remember growing up reading magazines and reading that advice over and over. So now it's like changing the mind of this like whole generation of people that were trained not to use anything with oils or that oil was the problem, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's really interesting that you said about the different markets and mm -hmm. how Europe and Asia didn't have that problem. And, you know, I kind of wonder if a lot of that actually kind of bring it back internally has to do with diet. Like, Probably, yeah. Because at least the, the standard American diet is so hard on the gut it causes so many more skin disorders. And I think that this kind of influx of, of breakouts and acne and these different skin issues, eczema, all of that kind of originates in the gut. And I wonder if that has to, you know what I mean? How that kind of plays I, into I think, this idea yeah, no, of oil absolutely. I think, I think um, in other markets, um, skincare is a lot more mature, you know, in Asia and in, in Europe, yeah. right? And I think it plays definitely as part of a lifestyle factor, you know, more of more of something that you need to do to maintain yourself rather than something you do when you think you're getting old and you need to fix it. Exactly. Um, so exactly. It, you know, I think it's a good way of putting it. It's, it's just, I think they have a more like holistic idea where North Americans tend to be more reactive, right? Where they the wait. Quick until, fix. Yeah. The quick fix. or they wait until they see the problem. And, you know, when, when we're younger, we're, you know, really into makeup and, and covering things up. And then as we start to age, we think, oh, I guess it's time to, to break out the, the skincare products now, but I'm sure diet and lifestyle plays a total role in, in how those other markets have viewed skincare and oils and, and where it sort of fits into their life as a whole, rather than, um, you know, not just, just the campaign on oil free. It's definitely deeper than that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's really fascinating to think about. Yeah, no, absolutely. Beauty is one of those things that I, I could talk forever about. I'm sure you could also talk yeah. forever about <laughs> Um, but we, uh, I think we've covered all the questions I wanted to, um, mm. pick your brain about today. And I really appreciate all your, um, all your really valuable information. And I know that, um, the tips that you've shared are certainly things that I can relate to. And I think a lot of, um, listeners will, will appreciate to hear. So thank you so much. And, uh, Oh my gosh, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, um, last question. Uh, if you've got to do a a quick five-step routine for any of your clients? What are the basic products that you're going to send them home with? It doesn't have to be brands. Just like what steps do you make sure everybody has? Five. Five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, double cleanse at night. So okay. first cleanse, oil cleanser. Yep. Second cleanse, water-based cleanser. Okay. Toner. Yep. 
Let's say not even the serum. Let's not okay. even go there. Okay. Okay. So moisturizer or facial oil, depending on what your particular preference is. Yep. And SPF. Okay. Good one. That's, it's tough, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm like, well, there's no exfoliation in there. We really should add that. And I know. And you're like, micellar water with a mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a hard awesome. question. I know. I know. But I always like to ask to see what different priorities are. So I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. We'll sign off there. Um, but it was great to talk to you and we really appreciate you having, having you out today. Thank you so much. This is really fun. My pleasure. Take care. Thank you, Leslie, and the whole Love Serengeti team for having me on the podcast. It truly was so much fun, um, and I was really flattered that you thought of me. So thanks again. I'll put the podcast link and their YouTube link down below in case anyone wants to see more of what Leslie's doing over there. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more videos on organic skincare or how to's using anti-aging facial devices, which are my favorite, make sure you subscribe. I have a new video every Monday. All right, I will see you all next week. Stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.